Hey, I'm Kristen, and this is NASA Now. It's green, it's clean, and it's packed full of energy. I'm talking about algae, and it's the future in aviation fuel. That's ahead. First, here's what's happening at NASA Now. The future depends on finding an alternative and renewable source for fuel. So, a team at NASA's Dryden Flight Research Center in California recently tested renewable biofuel made from, get this, chicken fat. The test was performed on NASA's DC-8 Airborne Laboratory, which is used for Earth, atmospheric, and celestial observations. It was the first test ever to measure biofuel emissions for nitrogen oxides and tiny particles of soot, both of which can degrade air quality in communities with airports. Over millions of years, biological materials from plants and animals get pressed into layers upon layers and form what we call crude oil. The difficulty is we're running out of oil or fossil fuel fairly quickly. Now we have to find an alternative source. A senior research scientist at NASA Glenn Research Center believes he has found the answer. Dr. Bilal Mark McDowell Bomani is turning biomass into biofuel, and he's doing it the green way. In order to be considered green, you have to meet one of these three metrics. One, is it alternative? Which means, is it not being used today? And if it is being used, is it a lower carbon footprint? Two, is it renewable? Are you using the Earth's naturally replenishing resources uh, to generate this? And three, is it sustainable? Are you worried about this, uh, its longevity in, in the future or perpetuity? Extreme Green is all three together. And that's what we have here in the Green Lab Research Facility. We are running out of fossil fuel. We need a viable alternative. One of the biggest pushes for the new biofuels is algae. We can grow algae, it sounds good, so on and so forth, but actually extracting fuel from algae is quite expensive. So in the Green Lab, we use something called climatic adaptation in order to generate the next generation of biofuels. Now let me explain to you what climatic adaptation is. And that is, can we take a plant and start at fresh water, and slowly add salt until we get to natural seawater salinity. In this lab, we have six different ecosystems. Fresh water, add a little bit more salt, which we call the Amazon, essentially. When we add more salt, we're in Africa. We add even more salt, we're in Arizona, which is tank four. We add even more salt, we're in Florida. Then we add even more salt, we're in California or the open ocean. What we're doing is we're combining algae as well as halophytes in here. What a halophyte is, is a salt tolerating plant. And what you see here, this is actually a mangrove plant. And the good thing about a mangrove, it actually thrives in salt water. Uh, it can also thrive in fresh water. But when it gets too much salt, if you see this white crystals, those are actually salt crystals. It actually has the ability to regulate the salt. And if it has too much salt, it actually sweats it out through the leaves. The plants are actually getting nutrients from the uh, water by using geotrophism. And so basically they're going down to get the, uh, the nutrients. And as you can see here, these are roots from the mangrove that are actually using the fertilizer from the fish to grow. Our goal is to maximize the lipid. And we translate that into fatty acids, and then we translate that into usable oil. So we're trying to maximize the growth of this plant for usable oil. And the beautiful thing about what we're doing is, not only can you get fuel from this plant, but it's actually now a food product. So the problem around the world are food, water, and fuel. And we actually are in the preliminary stages for an optimal solution for all three of them. When we started with the Green Lab, I knew immediately we were gonna consume a lot of energy. So one of my, the first things I did was I acquired wind turbines. Uh, wind turbines are clean energy and they, we can generate a lot of what we call free electricity and we can get a big payback. 
We should be connected to the grid very, very soon. When I say grid, I mean a solar array grid. So we'll have a self-sustainable renewable energy ecosystem, not using any direct electricity, growing the next generation of plants, making the world greener, or let me say extreme green for all. Today, you learned how biofuels are being created from lipids contained in halophyte plants. Here's an experiment where you can see what corn can yield. Teachers, in this experiment, you and your class can discover the way in which corn byproducts can be converted to ethanol. Look for the link called Cell Wall Chemistry on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Be sure to visit our Facebook page and share your green ideas. We'll see you then on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.